Yo, 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 big Kish back up in here. I came across this perfect, perfect breakdown of the Kendrick Lamar Not Like Us song by a young man named Donnell Wrights. I'm gonna I'm uh, leave a link in the description. I just wanna go, go over it, react to it. This is a dope, 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 dope breakdown, bro. Dope breakdown. I don't even care if I get a copyright or nothing that, but we gonna react to it because this, this is fire. This is fire. Y'all just, just, just listen, just check it out, bro. So a lot of us have already heard Kendrick Lamar is not like us, right? Uh, they not like us. 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 It's the number one song in the country, the fastest rap song to reach 100 million streams on Spotify, and the most streamed rap song in a single day ever, beating out Drake. I just wanna lay out why Not Like Us was the conclusion, the answer to a question that was originally posed on Kendrick Lamar's first diss track, like that. Let me break it down like a fraction. One of my favorite parts of Not Like Us is of course when Kendrick Lamar says this. Talk to him! Yeah, check it out how you break it down. Watch this. Check it out. And I want to add to that point because before then, Drake did the same thing with my hometown of Chicago. You know, I forgot about that. Bro, you know, oh, I that boy. Just check out this interview from Angie Martinez. Remember, he playing off of the lyrics, you're not a colleague, you're a colonizer. But check it out. When she asked Drake who he listens to and who he's been drawing inspiration from around the release of Nothing Was The Same. People want to know about you. People want to know what you're listening to. Yeah. What you like. What are you listening to? What are you, who um, are you feeling? I've been really inspired by like some real just gutter hood music. Ah, like just I enjoy listening that. to like Lil Reese Savage mixtape. Listen to Lil Herb, Lil Bibby. Hood gutter music. From who? Artists from Chicago, people like Lil Reese, G Herbo, Bibby, etc. I swear to God, Drake could contest this right now. Yeah. My first real encounter with Drake was, y'all don't know who this is? This is my favorite rapper. Drake called me his favorite rapper when I was 18 That's years insane. old. This is my favorite rapper right now. And I got so shy, I'm like, man, what the fuck? You just put me on the spot like that for? But the real question is to me, why was the guy who made Take Care drawing inspiration from G Herbo and Lil Reese? 2013 was still in the beginning of a kind of insane Drake run and the beginning of a shift in his music. Like nothing was the same after Drake released Nothing Was The Same. And the music he was drawing inspiration from started to really spill over into his music. And in many ways, Drake became an actor playing the role of a street dude. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that's my song by Drake. I, I fuck with that song right there. I like that. Better in the streets, I know. Have you ever played? <laughs> have you ever? Okay, let's play. Have you ever paid five hundred thousand like to an open case? After nothing was the same, he went on to release. If you're reading this, it's too late. And what a time to be alive, the mixtape of future, where he's really leaning into more of the street image. It's not even a discussion. And this shift kind of speaks to Kendrick Lamar's bar on Euphoria, where he said, I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. Act tough. Because that mm. was the same year, 2013, when Kendrick Lamar name dropped Drake on Control along with a bunch of other rappers. And then this time at the BT Cypher, referencing his album title, Nothing Was The Same. Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped Control and tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama no, clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you. High ha five. five. I'm bulletproof, your shots have never penetrate. Pin the tail on the dog, boy, you yeah. benefit. I got my thumb on hip hop yeah, and my foot in the yeah, back of your, your ass. ass. At the map, that guy the last laugh. laugh. <laughs> Notice how Kendrick Lamar right, called that shit, rap. Right. And I think that had a lot to do with Drake's response to control. You should he get into it. a rap battle. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, then that would be great. I feel like that's just. I think you, I feel like those things are of the moment. You wouldn't do it for sport ever, like. Just Hey, for anybody who watched battle rap, y'all remember Drake was always uh, uh, hanging around the battle rappers. You remember he was coming to them smack events? He was coming to them smack events, acting like he was about to battle murder mook and all that. Act like he was about to, I think he did get some, I think he get a win, win of like $50,000 or something like He was drawing inspiration from everybody, just copying swag, left and right, bro. Just to call someone out? Like, no, like, a, like after... And he, he know about the battle rap community. 
But check how he fronting with uh, Angie Martinez. Check check how he fronting. Look. Kendrick's thing. You wouldn't. I, I noticed you didn't really get into that too much. So I just like, I don't know. It, it just wasn't real to me. It's like, because those were harsh words, right? So it's like, I personally enjoy making like great music and bodies of work. So now somebody coming at you, calling you out. Now is harsh words. But you at every battle rap event. Hearing people talking about niggas' daughters, niggas' sons, talking about doing this and, and it's all cool then. But when somebody call you out, it's a problem. Those are harsh words. That's why Kendrick Lamar said it, it's time to, for the sensitive rapper to, you know what I mean? He said that boy about the sensitive rapper. Over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. Over, but you like, seem just now a little irritated by it. You scared no? of Kendrick. Yeah, you were scared. just by even saying that it Rightfully was so. harsh words. It seemed like maybe it irritated you for a second. Is that wrong? No, it's just like, I mean... And of course for me, this is when I see Kendrick nah. Mars' feelings for Drake start to shift. I hate y'all. I do anything to replace y'all. Shout out to Face Mars. Because after this, they never collaborated again. In working your way up and sort of building relationships, I, I wouldn't expect you to like throw all the relationships out the door for the sake of, like I said, being like the talk. Bruh, and every Kendrick, like almost every Kendrick Lamar does, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In the Control, uh, with Big Sean's song Control featuring Kendrick Lamar, he was like, I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Even in his um his latest song where he was like, uh, I hope they my real friends. If not, I Y N W Melly. He keep before he even say a diss, he let him know, look, I, I rock with y'all. But this is hip hop. This is a sport. This is how we this is how this go. All that new shit, all that new soft shit, I'm not rocking with that, bro. So, bro, man, Drake is corny. Talk of the internet for right. like, 10 days and that. Because there's a lot of people that were mentioned that I feel like won't, get, can't really go back and fuck with that guy after right. that. You know what I'm saying? I heard your finish. You don't want to work with me no more. Okay. okay. Here's a quick timeline so you can follow me. Poetic Justice, the Kendrick and Drake collab, came out in October of 2012. Control came out in August of 2013, where Kendrick Lamar named dropped Drake. Nothing Was the Same came out in September of 2013, which is the same day that Drake does his radio interview with Angie Martinez, calling Kendrick's words harsh and not real. Then the BET Cypher with TDE happened in October of 2013. These are some of the roots of the conflict. Moving on. On Drake's album, Nothing Was The Same, there was a song on there called Started From The Bottom, which I think is a song that connects directly to Like That, because Drake is making a claim on that song. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. He also makes the claim, I didn't kept it real from the jump. Say I never struggled, wasn't hungry, yeah, I doubt it. I remember conversations happening around this song because a lot of people felt like Drake didn't start from the bottom. He grew up in a relatively affluent neighborhood at soccer practices of bar mitzvah. And this is a background he originally right. planned to take advantage of, as evidenced, I think, by this earlier interview with Peter Rosenberg. Let's talk about you being Jewish real quick. Let's do that. Because a lot of people think that, like, Asher's Jewish. Right. He's not. But he wasn't there. He didn't read his portion, first of all. You didn't have a bar mitzvah. Come on. Are you serious? You don't understand how big you're about to be in the Jew world. Right? I, I, you don't understand how big. I'm <laughs> Yo, you, you, first of all, I live in an all Jewish area, so where, I went where to is that? Forest Hill. Okay. I went to I went to a predominantly Jewish school growing up. I definitely had a bar mitzvah in an Italian restaurant. Mind you. He proud of that yeah, shit, nice boy. A very nice okay. Italian restaurant. He proud. And yeah, man. I was in there. I was in synagogue. I had my yarmulke on. My mother is Jewish. Um, and you know we have we have great we have great Jewish dinners like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. First text message you ever sent me. Good Shabbos. Yep. Good Shabbos. And the fact yep. that you actually identify. Yep. That's gonna be like, that's gonna be big. Somebody today, who I won't mention, was like, you know how big you're gonna be. It's like this has never happened before. It's like every every Jew is going to just like really embrace. Well, here's the thing. There, yeah. Normally I would be mad about someone interrupting my interview, but it's Kanye, yeah. Peter Rosenberg, man. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Huh, my, my lord, man, I'm just, man, it's getting pretty hip hop. What up, man? So when Kendrick Lamar comes on Big Sean's control and talks about the competitive nature of hip hop, push your teeth, meat meals, ASAP Rocky, Drake. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you. Trying to make sure your core cool fans never heard of you. They don't want to hear that one more now to run from you. What is competition? I'm Instead of Drake seeing that as a cultural moment in hip hop, which it was, he tried to downplay it, called it forgettable, and said it was not real. That doesn't demonstrate an understanding of how hip hop culture works, does it? it? It just wasn't real to me. It's like, I saw him after that, and it was just like, love. So it's like, was that real, or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you see, he know what it is. He just don't want it. He just ain't want that, 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 that smoke, that good old... 
You ain't want it. Same time, it's like, you know, then let it be real then, you know? I mean, because those were harsh words, right? And this part of his interview with Angie Martinez and Let Nation it be Marie. real. Like, As a fan, I would enjoy a Drake and Kendrick kind of sparring oh, yeah. session. Well, I'm sure yeah. you would. Yeah, yeah, I would. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I, I never I never thought Kendrick, but there's a couple other people I thought would have called my name by now that I never did. But Oh, is that what you're waiting for, the name call? I'm waiting for it. I'm ready for Ooh. it. Not waiting for it, but I'm ready for it. I'm not I'm not the guy. But there's a reason why they don't call my name. I'm not the guy. I'm not the one. <laughs> I like when you talk crazy, Drake. I'm not talking crazy. I'm being honest. I know. I like that. I'm not the I one. I think people think you're nice, Andy. too nice. Oh, I am a very nice guy. That's how I was raised. I'm a cordial, very nice guy. I, I, I don't like confrontation, but I'm also not the guy, especially when it comes to rap. It's clear to me that Kendrick doesn't like this new version Man, of Drake because Kendrick Lamar doesn't dope, believe that Drake started from the bottom. Scared, a lot of people bro. don't. And this is where Like That comes in because even before that dope Kendrick verse, you got to think about the chorus of that song. Kicking doors, kicking in doors, is you like that? All 24, you won't go, is you like that? Because like from the bottom really like that. So Drake said he started from the bottom, but this chorus speaks to real shit that people from the bottom are often forced to do to survive. I mean, you come from the kind of background that Kendrick did. The same Kendrick that said shit I've been through probably offends you. This is Paula's older son. And you hear a guy with Drake's background saying that he started from the bottom. It's probably angering. And we hear that anger in Meet the Grams when Kendrick says, you lied about your accent and your past tense. All is perjury. perjury. Like you didn't start from the bottom. Because once again, from the bottom really like that. So in the song like that, Kendrick Lamar is telling Drake, I'm actually like that. I'm really from the bottom. And the way this beef played out, with Kendrick Lamar dropping over Drake's drops on the same night sometimes, hitting Drake with a back-to-back -back two times, throughout the back and forth, Kendrick Lamar is proving to us that Drake really isn't like that. And one of my favorite examples of this, one of my favorite bars from Euphoria, is when Kendrick says, they run to America to imitate heritage, but they can't imitate this violence. Yes, like the unique circumstances of being a black man raised yeah. in the ghetto, in the belly of the beast as they call America, the unique traits that this specific circumstance birthed in me cannot be imitated. I find peace knowing that it's harder in the streets, I know. Luckily, I didn't have to grow there. I would only go there. Oh, there, we that I know I know there. there. And in this beef, Kendrick outraps Drake, outcalculates him, and uses people from Drake's own team to backdoor him. Because like he said, I'm really like that. So not like us answers the question that Kendrick Lamar is posing on like that. All 24 you won't go is you like that? Because from the bottom really like that. And the answer? They are not like that. In fact, they are not like us. And the they in there is important because this isn't just about Drake. It's about the very idea of a person like Drake existing in this way, in this space, and doing what Tupac heavily criticized, colonizing the ghetto. All the society is doing is leeching off the ghetto. They use the ghetto for their pain, for their sorrow, for their culture, for their music, for their happiness, for their movies, to talk about boys in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, this shit. I'm about to get the best sleep. That is not your house, that's an Airbnb. That is not your accent, that's A-A-V-E. And I understand, please, I do, that hip hop is a black origin in its, in its art form. And the lyrical content and styling will reflect that. But when it's a white artist, why do we all have to sit around and accept that it is genuine? Well, like we know it's not, you know so much dirty money i need hand sanitizer it, it, it could have or rather should have been that was a legal tax-free inheritance and i use a lot of hand sanitizer cruise oh i'm i'm getting what he's saying i'm getting what he's saying we never call out white, white rappers for saying that they do this do that do that do that we never call them out for that shit. i noticed that we never call them out we always get together and be like, oh, he can spit, he can rap, he can, oh shit, he fire. But we never question him. We never put him on it, you know what I mean, on Front Street. But with us, boy, oh boy. Let you say you ain't let you say you got arrested on February 13th, but it really, you you really got you really got uh released that same day. Everybody gonna beat down your damn throat. Oh no, he ain't get locked up, he got released on the same day. Look. <laughs> They're going to kick your ass out of the black community, bro. <laughs> Yo. Like, that would have been just as, as... Because like Van Lathan astutely pointed out, Kendrick doesn't just hate Drake. Kendrick legit thinks Drake is a villain of the culture. He despises not just Drake, but the idea that Drake exists. Like, Kendrick hates that someone could be Drake. He wants no more Drakes forever. Because even after being called out for owning Tupac's ring and using AI to imitate his voice, he still put Tupac's ring in the Family Matters music video as a way to flex or brag. You call the Tupac estate and bang him and sue me and get that shit down. You think the bank will let you disrespect Tupac, nigga? I think that Oprah show will be your last stop, nigga. Kendrick is affirming, I don't have to go to Chicago or Atlanta to borrow slang to imitate ways of speaking and being. I'm from the West Coast. We got our own 
own shit and this is my culture. I was given the torch by the greats because I'm respected in this culture. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna mean this. You got the torch, you better run with it. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> Drake had to pay for his shit. Look, Kendrick up there crying. That shit's special, I'm cut bro. From the cloth. I'm Machiavelli's offspring, as he said. This hip hop cultural shit, particularly this West Coast shit, is my inheritance. Meanwhile, Drake got a lie to kick it. Because Kendrick Lamar has a song by that title that talks about people lying about who they are in order to fit in. You assume you can just come and hang with the homies, but your level of realness ain't the same. Circus acts only attract those that entertain. And he goes on to say, And the world don't respect you, and the culture don't accept you, but you think it's all love. And the girls gonna reject you once your parody is done. Damn. Damn. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Damn. Love and liberation to you all. Hey, man, this a hey, this a beautiful breakdown, bro. Y'all follow this brother, Donnell Wrights. I'm a uh, I'm gonna write a link in the uh, description. But yeah, y'all let me know how y'all feel. Big Kiss signing out. I'm gone, bro. He had to pay for that shit. He had to pay his way through, bro. Damn. You signed the one nigga who signed it. This, ah, right, I'm out, bro. I'm out. This is crazy, bro.